with some loads during the game. Wasn't last year they had around about 1,000 games or so as a manager? I don't know, but I think around about, so there must be a few more. One like this, not in the collection. Yeah, we thought we played really well today. Up until the sending off, I thought we were magnificent. And then from the sending off onwards, it was a, a different game. Maybe a little bit negative with our passing, not, not positive enough. Maybe slowed the game down a little bit too much. But yeah, I think we've got a lot to look forward to. We've got a team that um, is very strong. Um, but we're going to have a little few bumps on the road. Today's a bump, a disappointment, but we have to be strong enough to take it and bounce back. It was a roller coaster of a game, really. It started so high. Um, the atmosphere was incredible. We were playing really well. We had them sort of hit and in a, in, a, in a bad space, and we just couldn't get the second goal. And when you're playing against teams at that level, if you don't do that, they're always going to get more chances towards the end of the game. From the early minutes, were you in difficult circumstances with the yellow card? Yeah, I think. Well, without getting myself in any trouble, felt it was a foul first of all. You know, I've got a push in the back, um, but uh, these, these things happen. And then you know I've made a mistake, and you know, probably on a different day I could have I could have I could have seen red. But and I feel like today was about who wanted to win more, and especially with the circumstances that we were in, we definitely showed that. And um, you know it's it's a very proud evening for, for the club. Yeah, well, one of the most exciting fixtures in the top flight delivers once again. This one, bang on the money. We're actually going to talk about time wasting and descent a little later in the yeah. show, Alan. But let's take it back to the start because this game was tasty from the very beginning. Yeah, I think uh, John Brooks, the uh, the referee, had a really poor start to the game. The first 10 minutes, I think he got two big decisions wrong. Um, this was this was the first one. I mean, I thought this was a clear foul from Anthony Gordon on Trent. That that should have been a foul for Trent Alexander-Arnold, no doubt about it. I think everyone would agree with that. But he gets the yellow card for time waste, not chucking the ball away, and rightly so. That was the right decision, the yellow card. But that should have been a foul yeah. for Trent. And this is frustration you can, you can from absolutely, Trent. Absolutely, you can understand that. And then a couple of minutes later, this happens. He's on a yellow card. That should have been another yellow card. There's no doubt about that again. And now the only thing I can say from the referee probably thinks it's too early in the game to be given another yellow card. That's that that that's that's not right. It should have been another yellow card. Yeah. So it was a really tough ten minutes for the referee. And then so then any other time yet? So Trent stays on. Don't think you're getting away with talking about fullbacks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come. <sighs> Still defender. So Trent stays on, but then actually the tricky start goes. Things go from bad to worse for Liverpool. Yeah. Well, this, the Van Dyke was, was was strange. When I first saw it, I thought there's there's no chance. There's mm -hmm. no chance that's a red card. But as the day's gone on, we've gone and, and we've seen more things. evidence. Al's got in my head as well a little <laughs> bit, I have to say. But yeah, as we play it here, it was just, it was strange because we're talking about Van Dyke's position here. And a lot of people said he should only be thinking about Isak. But he's actually looking at Robertson and that run that Tonali can make behind him. So I understand why he's delayed. But once the ball goes, he just makes a fraction too late decision to go. And that costs him the red card. On this angle here, you'll see that is an obvious goal scoring opportunity. So I understand mm -hmm. why it's been, been given. I, I really do. But from a defender's point of view, I think that's soft. Had that been in the box, it probably would have been a penalty and a, and a yellow because of the double, double jeopardy rule. Mm. But you can see there, he's took him out, he swiped him. And I think the referee got the decision right in the end after I've watched it about 50 times. Yeah. I mean, it took me a while to get there. You know, I was screaming and shouting at the TV when I was watching it. But I think he made the right decision. I think it was the right decision. I don't think there's any doubt about it. it was the right decision. He's first, then he's got the ball after that. So, And he would have been clean through. Yeah, it's interesting you say about Van Dijk's position as well. Do you think it's him that should be calling the full background? Yeah, well, Robertson should definitely be inside and he's got to make a judgment whether to stay or, or to, to go. And I, when you're a centre-half in that position, you're already worrying about that one across, mm -hmm. which was Isak. So that should be his main focus. But because the position of Robertson wasn't across, it's put him in two minds. Yeah. And that's why, you know, he was a little bit late. OK, well, Liverpool down to 10 men. The funny thing is, watching this in the green room with you, Al, you were calling it. You were getting a little bit worried. It was getting quiet in there, weren't it, Micah? Yeah, it was very it was quiet. Like, things well, are changing. I could the see momentum's what was happening. changing. I could see what was going to happen because it was a combination of Newcastle being really sloppy all over the pitch and missing too many chances. 
and also it was it was Liverpool sticking together, being really clever, having a fantastic goalkeeper to make top saves at the right time. Mm -hmm. But also Jurgen made some fantastic substitutions. And when you've got these two guys to come on, they brought a bit of energy, a little bit of know-how to the game, and they they give Newcastle different problems. Newcastle sloppy. That was the start of it. The, the half an hour they looked lost Newcastle, but. Liverpool came back in because of this. They offered a threat. They offered a threat running in behind. As I said, they, they then started to play the passes in. They got away with that one. Newcastle lose that first ball. They shouldn't. And all of a sudden, again, they're into the uh, the defence of, of Newcastle. Make the runs in behind, clever balls in behind. Fantastic tackle from, uh, from, from Botman. But then again, all of a sudden, Liverpool start to press. And they hadn't really done that a lot of the game. They couldn't do that for the game. And they were, they were prepared to gamble. Newcastle really struggled. They couldn't get the, 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 the ball again. They forced the mistake, forced the error. They put it out. Liverpool go on to the attack again. And then they, they bring another substitute on who did all the damage, Darwin uh, Nunes. They get the ball. Harvey, Harvey Elliott, look what he does. Straight away, ball in behind. And that caused Newcastle all sorts of problems. They went deeper and deeper. Okay, they get away with uh, they get away with that one. And this is a turning point for the game. Harvey Barnes gets a, a, a really good performance a couple of weeks ago, and rightly so for his substitute appearance because he made such a difference that time. I think he's he's really cost Newcastle there because that is a simple ball across two 0 and the game's over with. So Liverpool stick together, as I said, they have on their belief again, and then they've got that. And that's another mistake. And, I mean, it's, I wouldn't even call that half a chance. That is an unbelievable finish. The pace and power to find the bottom corner. The goalkeeper's got no chance. The tails are up. They believe they can go and actually uh, go and win the game now. So from 10 men really struggling, the back in, the driving seat. Look at the men they've got. They're committing forward now. Good ball in behind again. All right, nothing comes of it. But that's them pressing to go and win the game. And that's exactly what they do. Again, another mistake from Bruno. The loser in midfield, Newcastle. What a ball this is from Salah. The run in behind again. Dan Burns really slow on the turn. And that's an unbelievable finish again. And no wonder he gets a, a, a hug off his manager, rightly so. Because him himself has actually gone and won that game for Liverpool. Two shots on target, two goals. Two yeah. shots on target, two goals. Is this a turning goals. point for him It now? should be, because that, that, they, they aren't bad stats. I mean, 17 goals in 26 starts, but you've also got to look at the number of chances he missed last season. Mm -hmm. So that has to be another start for him to get going again. Yeah, well, Michael, what about Newcastle then? Well, yeah, I last mean... Last week and the, then this one. There's, there's moments, obviously, they've got a good start with, with, with Villa, then they're going to Man City, it was always going to be tough. Today, it was about moments within the game, and Alan showed it, he chalked with Barnes, and it was Wilson. If he plays that, the game's dead and buried. And you just think of Eddie Howe's record. He's only lost five games at home in Newcastle, and three of them have been Liverpool, mm -hmm. you know. So they've got the number a little bit. Um, but there's positive signs. They just need to get to that next level, punish people and, and, and see games out. Well, you ended on a positive. Go on, then. Um, no, he's, trying think, to give, he's trying to give you something there's, there. There's, there's no panic. Disappointing, particularly the position that you're in. When you've got a team on the ropes like they had Liverpool, they've got to finish them off. They had the chances. But no panic. They've played two really good teams in Liverpool and Manchester City. They're playing another one next weekend against uh, against Brighton. So it's back to training tomorrow and then working for next weekend. But no panic. OK. No panic from Al. Yeah, very difficult one uh, to take for Newcastle. Let's go to St James's Park. The former Newcastle striker, Sheryl Ramiobi, waiting to talk to us. She's all the Liverpool fans at the end. Uh, Sheryl, what was it like from a New Newcastle point of view? How hard to take right at the death? Yeah, the curse of uh, Liverpool strikes again. Um, it's been it's been so long since uh, Newcastle have have won a game. I think against Liverpool, and uh, obviously, clearly, the second half wasn't you know what we expected. The players obviously worked hard and tried, but I, I thought there was a little bit of hesitancy in that second half, trying to protect uh, the lead. And it's it's always difficult when you do that against such a a top side like Liverpool. You know where they've got players who can come off the bench and strike at any moment and uh yeah it was like Odie said there it was just disappointing that we we didn't we didn't you know put our foot on the gas in in that second half and you know if you don't do that you're going to get uh, burnt in this league and uh you know that's what happened with the chances they had showed her at one nil in the second half should they have put it to bed 
Yeah, I mean, clearly, it's it, you know, you're playing against ten men. You know, you're in the ascendancy. You're at home. Uh, in generally, you look at the chances that we've created. Certainly, you know, the first game of the season, we put everything away, and obviously, if this goes in, I mean, it's it's game over. Um, that was unlucky. That was such a great run. Uh, but you have to say, you look at the one that, that Alisson saved in the second and the first half. You know, one of the best saves I've ever seen live. And and then you look at, obviously, he's he's running through here, and you think. You know, square it, square it to you know Wilson. Uh, but we had two, we had enough chances to um, to put the game away, and that's the disappointing thing for Newcastle. I think it's it's important that you know they regroup. You know, these are this type of games. You know, for Liverpool, where you know it can really make it your season. You know, you can resurrect it, and um, and and on the flip side, you know, for Newcastle, you know, it's it's it's, it's just a deflating defeat. You know, in a game that you know quite clearly they should have won. But we saw their character last season, didn't we? Um, and mentality. I mean, it's an early season test of that again here now. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Eddie Eddie knows um, what he's got in that dressing room. You know, it's, it's obviously clearly a disappointing result. It's it's a result. You know, I've come to I've come to be accustomed to, to be honest. Um, uh, but that that doesn't take away from what they're trying to do, what they're trying to build. And like you say, there was enough in that game for Newcastle to win it. Um, they just didn't take the chances. And you know, when you're playing against the Liverpool side, who are who are down like that, and you know who are who've got so much experience um, in the side, uh, like you, you guys have mentioned. You know you have to be on your toes, and and quite clearly you look at the two goals at the score. I think it was that was the only two shots they had on target, and it was just clinical, and that was the difference today. Um, you know, in the final third. Great to speak to you, Shola. Thank you very much. Right, thanks, indeed. guys. And that's that. Um, <laughs> you can see. Just what it means to Jurgen Klopp. He says in over a thousand games, he's never had a scenario like that. And as you alluded to at the full time whistle, one to tell his grandkids about. And that's coming from a man who's won everything. Yeah, well, you know, in this job, you try to be balanced about it and control your emotions. But even then, I was, I, I just had the feeling that, that that was something special we witnessed there. And you, you know, you just don't come back with 10 men against a really strong team away from home when things aren't going great. You know, and you, you might have been down to nine men and, and all these things. You know, you've got a young kid making his debut at centre-half in a crucial position. You, Joe Gomez hasn't kicked the ball for a while. You know, the, the, that's the other centre-half. Just things were just going wrong. And how they've pulled that out of the fire. And you just, I just sensed at the time, that is special. It's a special result. And you could see, did you see Trent Alexander-Arnold's re- reaction at the end? Mm. Jurgen Klopp to the fan, the players, they were on the pitch celebrating like they'd won a Champions League final. It was quite incredible. And to get seven points out of that, that was a tricky start for Liverpool. Away at Newcastle, away at Chelsea. Um, you know, that's a, a good return, seven points out of nine, with a brand new midfield as well. We saw those chances for Newcastle with Sherlock. What we didn't see was Alisson's save again, which is worth seeing, because Almiron thought he'd scored. And that would have been with 10 men game over. Yeah, I think we all thought Almiron had scored. Um, this is just an unbelievable... Save it. I, I, well, save the season so far, and it will, it will be in there coming the end of the season because one of the greatest saves he's seen live. Shola says, "I'm telling you, he hit the ball with absolutely. He couldn't hit any be- any better than he did. And even when he got his gloves wet, I thought this was in the back of the net. But it was a sensational save and um, kept them in the in the game at uh, at one nil. Just so-